Hey everybody, so welcome back to Jim Bob's Garden. So I'm kind of excited today. I'm actually going to add another perennial to my food forest area. Now this is something called Okinawan spinach. And it's a very interesting plant. Um, it does a really good job of making um, greens that are very interesting looking. You can see they have purple on the bottom and green on the top. So it is a perennial plant here in Florida and you'll have to check on, on your particular zone and all. Um, but apparently, much like uh, longevity spinach, it'll die back in the winter time and then come back again from the roots in the, uh, in the spring. It's also one that is easily cut and rerooted. So I'll be doing that with this to, to make sure that I have plenty around and I'll keep at least one plant inside uh, to protect it from the frost and make sure that I have some more for the next year. But from everything I understand, it grows much like uh, longevity spinach we have a lot of experience with um, it is one that even uh, though we got down to 24 degrees last year it has grown back from the root and has done very well and is now producing lots of good greens for us uh, for the summertime it's another heat loving plant does very well in the heat um, but apparently you want to keep a little bit of shade on it here in Florida and that's why I've got it here I'll get about five to six hours of sun here I've got a crepe myrtle above me and it'll get a little more sun in the uh, in the fall once the crepe myrtle loses its leaves. Now apparently it, do, it prefers a sandy, well-draining loam, which this is um, an area where I've got a lot of wood chips down, um, but it's also very sandy up underneath. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clear back some of the um, wood chips because just like any other green, it prefers to have uh, lots of nitrogen and I don't want the you know what little wood chips have not broken down to continue to rob the uh, the soil from nitrogen or of nitrogen. So let me get that done. I'll clear this out a little bit, and then we'll go ahead and get this planted. All right, so this area had a lot of, um, of um, pigeon peas growing in it last year, so it should be fairly nitrogen rich already. And then I'm gonna take, dig a hole. Now I do have a lot of roots in here. And a lot of people are like, well, you should never plant stuff where there's roots, because you know, you could end up with basically the tree starving the plant of water and resources. I really don't think that's the case. And in fact, a lot of what I have found to be true is that where there's a lot of roots, there's a lot of life. And where there's a lot of life, that seems to be the better place to put your plants. So, we're going to give it a shot. Like I said, I'll take some cuttings as we go along, once I get it growing nice. Well, that is moist down there. That's nice. All right. So um, I'll take some cuttings as we go along so that that way I know that I have some uh, backup just in case this does not do well. All right. And like I said, I do believe that having roots in the area just means you have a lot of life. So just like any other plant, you squeeze around the bottom of the pot, pop it out, Try and keep the native soil there. Now this one is not very root bound, so I'm just gonna stick it directly in the dirt as is. Squish it down. Put the little dirt back in there. Cover it back up. And voila, we have planted. Get these wood chips back on, what little bit there is. Now, a lot of the reasoning behind a food forest is to try and keep as many perennials as possible in a situation where they grow of their own accord. Basically, they, they just take off, and then all you got to do is every once in a while come out and harvest. So, if this is indeed a perennial plant, like I think it will be, 
this should be the perfect situation to uh, grow myself some food through the summertime. Now, of course, we're going to want to water it in very well. Give it a couple gallons here. My rainwater. Make sure it gets a nice, healthy start. Get ready for transplant shock. But this plant is not only used for food, but it's also a potential for edible landscaping. Because it is an attractive plant, it apparently grows to be a bush if you let it. And uh, you can trim it back. Unlike a lot of other spinaches, you can trim this back on a regular basis. Um, and then just kind of form the bushes you like. I believe it'll, it, it'll be more of an upright bush than what I'll see with my longevity spinach. But in any case, it should be a nice perennial that will continue to produce for me. It'll be a good addition to my food forest as it'll help to shade some of the areas here. I've got it right here off my path so I can reach in and grab it as I, as I want. But there you go. One more perennial food source to be added that's now been added to my uh, food forest. All right, well, thanks for stopping by. Look into getting some Okinawa spinach. Everybody, and I got this recommendation from several people um, that made comments on my YouTube channel. Um, well, on Jim Bob's Garden. <laughs> and they suggested this highly. Uh, apparently, it's a very well-liked uh, green. And it should look really neat in a salad, in addition to tasting good. All right, so there you go. One more perennial in the food forest. Thanks once again for stopping by. Do me a favor, give me a like and a subscribe and let me know what you think. But most importantly, grow some. Maybe get some Okinawa spinach growing in your yard so that through the summertime here in Florida at least, you got some greens that you can continue to put into a salad. All right, thanks once again. Y'all come back and see me.